Social media is rife with images and footage of Hindu deities being destroyed. Temples have been vandalised and there are those of other religions and even those of no religion who are happy to mock the plight of Hindus. But a question that has arisen in the wake of these attacks is, why doesn't God stop them? If the images are really meant to be God, then why doesn't he save himself? And if he cannot save himself from attack, then how can he possibly save us from anything? Point number one, you cannot make idol of God. The moment you make an idol of God, you're degrading God. Imagine you make idol and suppose the idol falls. What happens to the idol? The idol breaks. If the idol cannot help itself, how can it help me? The first thing to note is that the destruction of the sacred happens in all religions and is in no way a reflection of how true God is or is not in that religious belief system. Scriptures can be burned, buildings can be destroyed, deities and prophets can be mocked. Tragic and terrible things happen in all aspects of life and it is beyond the logic of the mind to work out why God might stop some things from happening and not others. But the accusation that Hindu deities should somehow stop themselves from being attacked is based on people having an Abrahamic vision of who God is. They imagine that he dwells exclusively in some distant heaven, completely divorced from this creation, and that he and the material universe are completely separate. God is seen as a wrathful being that should be feared and obeyed from afar. When those of Abrahamic religion see Hindus worshipping deities, they assume that God should act as some kind of glorified superman. They believe that if he is provoked, he has to respond and defeat his enemies, just like any other powerful dictator. But this incredibly simplistic and primitive understanding of God cannot be mapped onto Hindu theology. In chapter 7 of the Gita, it is stated, At the end of many births, the one who has true knowledge surrenders to me, realising that Krishna is everything. Such a person is very rare. In Hinduism, God is all that is, and the one with divine realisation is able to see this truth. The situation is much like being colourblind. When we are of limited consciousness and trapped in the identity of our body and mind, then all we see is black and white. But through ritual and prayer, a stone or image becomes transformed into a vessel of divine grace. It becomes a portal through which we can contact God personally. By worshipping, praying and serving this deity, we also grow in our consciousness. We come to the true understanding that the Lord who is present in this deity is present everywhere and beyond. The all-pervading nature of God is perceived. Hinduism recognises that we cannot see God everywhere until we have seen God somewhere. If the deity is destroyed or broken, God is not destroyed in the same way he would not be destroyed if any other stone was smashed. What is destroyed, however, is the portal through which we can personally access him. To the devotee with faith, the deity is the specific point through which the infinite nature of God can be contacted. It is a place where he personally receives our offerings, where his presence can be felt and where our mind can be fixed. On an outside physical level, God is passively available. We have to approach and dedicate ourselves to him. We have to look after and care for the deity. This is part of the devotional process. But this process can bring about a radical change. It allows God to become actively available within our consciousness. We begin to perceive his presence within and everywhere around. Every devotee knows that the deity is externally material. They understand that the metal can corrode, the marble can be broken, that wood can rot, but this does not change the sentiment that God can be experienced through the image. As with all things material, nothing lasts forever. Everything apart from our divine self, the Atman and God is subject to the laws of the material world and on a purely physical level, the temple deity is no exception to this. The reason why the destruction of a deity is so tragic, however, is not because God has somehow been killed, but because the vessel and focal point of a devotee's relationship with God has been destroyed. 
the sacred has been violated and that is incredibly hurtful. The amazing thing about temple worship is not how much physical power the deity can display. God is power itself and that is taken for granted. God's glory is measured by how dear he is to us. Praying to an image therefore does not limit him, it only provides a wonderful opportunity for us to know him. The temple deity is not the only such portal in Hinduism. Mantra and the name of God for instance is sound vibration. Sound is material and limited. But this sound vibration of mantra connects us to the divine and so is seen as a form of God. The knowledge of scripture is a set of teachings and ideas. From a superficial perspective, such teachings and the paper it is written on are just material. But the knowledge of scripture awakens us to the truth, so scripture is also seen as a form of God. On an external level, these portals are material and limited, but at the same time they are divine because they make the ultimate available to us. This unique understanding of God is actually Sanadana Dharma's greatest strength. The ability to use the finite to access the infinite in so many diverse ways has kept Hinduism alive for thousands of years. It has allowed Hindus to survive incessant persecution. Any time something sacred is destroyed, it can be reclaimed in another form. The destruction of temple deities is horrific, but no matter how many deities of God are destroyed, you cannot destroy God. Hindus know this. They have realised that no matter what, the Supreme Lord will always find a way back to his devotee. Many thanks for listening.